At the end of October, after a couple of months' delay, a new bridge connecting the former British colony of Hong Kong with Macau in the Chinese city of Zhuhai was officially unrolled. The 55-kilometer long bridge crosses the mouth of the Pearl River, in the middle of which it shortly submerges into a tunnel that allows for the passage of the largest ships. A vast crossroad just outside of Macau splits the Y-shaped bridge into the Macanese and Chinese parts. The bridge will be one of the most visible symbols of the Chinese Great Bay Area project that intends to imitate San Francisco's example and connect Hong Kong, Macau, Guangzhou, and other cities in the Pearl River Delta into a metropolitan area and a multicultural business center with 67 million inhabitants. Hello and welcome to World of China, a channel to explore China. In today's video, we're talking about Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge corruption scandal, so stay tuned and give this video a big thumbs up. With a few in Hong Kong are celebrating, the antagonists of the project have a long list of complaints, with the price tag coming out on top. While the idea of the bridge was considered by the mainland officials, most of the burden is on the shoulders of Hong Kong's taxpayers, who would rather see the funds spent on education or housing. They view the bridge as a way of transferring money from taxpayers to local and Chinese oligarchs, whose construction firms built the whole project. Despite receiving a hefty check from the government, the builders still tried to conserve the construction material. Due to the cheap quality of cement, artificial islands started crumbling and drifting away only a few weeks after completion. Low safety standards lead to nine deaths and hundreds of injuries of construction workers. An administrative control discovered falsified stress tests. With this allegation, two supervisors were given jail sentences. Besides a hefty government check and cheap quality material, the bridge will never recover its costs. Hardly anyone can drive on it. Why was it built then? The answer is politics. On the one hand, the local government depends on the support of oligarchs. Consequently, the officials need to maintain good relations with the city's richest people. Wonder why such projects are nicknamed white elephants after a Buddhist legend in which a white elephant is an undesired present as it has no value, yet it needs to be taken care of. The driveway is strictly restricted. That permission will only be granted to 150 private cars a day and the applicants have to be Hong Kong's permanent citizens only. And they have to prove that they are employed or have a firm in Macau. If there are more than 150 applicants on any day, licenses will be issued via a lottery. The lucky drivers will still not be able to make it to Macau. They must leave their cars in a car park just before the entrance to Macau and continue with public transport or taxi. The journey also comes with two border controls, and if one's destination is China, drivers need to change lanes in the middle of the bridge as traffic drives on the left in Hong Kong and Macau while on the right is China. Surprisingly from the bridge, the cargo's got some massive benefits. According to the mainland newspapers, till September, goods worth $8.4 billion had been moved across the bridge. Over 90% of this came from Zhuhai and the rest from other provinces in China. An average of 300 cargo vehicles uses the bridge every day. The second and more important explanation is the attempt of the Chinese government to accelerate and deepen the alliance of Hong Kong into China to weaken the separatist moods of the city and limit the spread of rebellious ideas such as press freedom, human rights, or an independent judiciary. A bridge that connects two independent regions with mainland China is a perfect weapon in the propaganda department's arsenal. Except for these diplomatic scandals and conspiracy, there are some darker secrets to be revealed. Requests for inspection and survey checking forms which were late accounted for about 28% of the total number of forms that contractually had to be submitted. The documents were in connection with the bridge's Hong Kong Link Road, an 8.88 billion Hong Kong dollars project launched in May 2012. One of the RISE forms involved was submitted more than two years after construction was completed at the 55 projects and also had discovered an extra 116 problematic tests related to the bridge on top of the 210 already recorded. But the department gave an assurance there was no risk to public safety. Our analysis showed that the concrete of 55 public projects still complied with the government's requirements, said Norman Hyung Yuxai, acting director of the department. The alleged falsification of concrete tests carried out on what will become the world's longest bridge tunnel complex currently under construction in southern China has prompted an expert to warn that parts of it may have to be replaced entirely. 
The troubled multi-billion dollar bridge linking Hong Kong to Zhuhai in Macau was hit with another controversy as the chief of the highway admitted two seawalls on reclaimed land of 10 meters. Despite discovering the abnormal movements of the two seawalls involving an area of 5,500 square meters in late 2014, the highway's department did not reveal the incident until following a media report which accused the body of a cover-up. This ambitious bridge project was opened by President Xi Jinping with great fanfare on October 24, 2018, the first land link between Hong Kong and the Western Pearl River Delta, or PRT, at 120 billion Hong Kong dollars. At 55 kilometers, it's the longest cross-sea bridge in the world, but traffic during the first year averaged 4,115 vehicles or trips per day, compared to official forecasts of 9,200 to 14,000 in 2008. That meant any income from tolls of 280 million yuan compared to annual running costs of 2.2 billion yuan. This consists of 220 million yuan in maintenance cost, 65 million yuan for major repairs, 37 million yuan in wages for staff, 930 million yuan in interest payments, and 900 million yuan for devaluation. This left the loss for the year of 1.9 billion. It's not clear who will pay this loss. Will it be shared among the three governments which invested in the bridge? Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. Give this video a big thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comment box. For more exciting videos, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. I'll be back with another exciting video soon. Till then, check out our channel for more exciting videos and stay tuned.